I'm getting that itch, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting that itch to start talking more in-depth 2023 rookies. So here I'm going to do an in-depth video of either two or three rounds of this 2023 rookie mock draft that we had. But of course, before we get into it, please go down there, drop a like in the video, subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty. If you want to get into a draft with us, if you want to get our 2023 Dynasty rankings, of course, you can do both by signing up for Underdog Fantasy, where you can find the link in the description, find it in the comment section. When you sign up with promo code FLOCK, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. You can also check out all these cool player props and available in damn near every state. But that should be it. And luckily, I decided that we were going to give ourselves the number one overall pick. So it had no luck involved. So we get number one overall. We decided to go B. John Robinson here. There's not too much to discuss. I think that he should be the consensus number one overall player for almost everybody. Now, yes, I am a University of Texas Longhorn alumni, so I am a little biased. I may or may not have taken another Texas Longhorn later on in this draft, but just simply a running back that right now is projected to be a mid-first round NFL draft pick. A running back that at the same time has the size to be a three-down workhorse. A running back at the same time is one of the best passing down running backs in this entire draft class. There, there's nothing else you could ask for. He's going to be my number one overall guy. At two, we had a surprise here. I love the player. I do not recommend taking him here in Superflex drafts. We had Jackson Smith and Jigba, who obviously the number one wide receiver for me. We've already talked about time and time again, the fact that he outproduced Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave in the same offense at a younger age. I understand while we are so excited for his 2022 season, he did absolutely nothing. It was not good. It was not exciting. I'm ignoring it. He was injured, okay? He got injured. What the hell do we want from the man? I think that it's more likely that his injury impacted his play. He missed a crap ton of time, and we shouldn't look at those games. Rather than he went from being one of the best wide receivers in all of college football as a true sophomore to a bump. Come on. Uh, I think that Jason's still phenomenal. I wouldn't recommend taking him at two. At three, CJ Stroud off the board. Interesting to see someone taking Stroud over Young. I will say that I could see this being consensus after the NFL draft. Because if we're looking at Bryce Young, he's most likely going at number one, number two. The team that will be selecting Bryce Young will most likely have a horrendous roster surrounding him. Whether that's an offensive line, a receiving core, I mean, even a coaching staff, it's going to be ugly for Bryce Young. Whereas if we're going to be looking at the NFL draft order and you don't think CJ Stroud goes one or two, you have some decent landing spots. Now, of course, there's never going to be a phenomenal landing spot at the very top of the NFL draft outside of back what we had in 2021 with the 49ers, our guy Trey Lance, of course. But anyway, I mean, with CJ Stroud, he may end up going to Indy. He may end up going to Seattle, which those would be pretty good spots at least significantly better than what you could have with Bryce Young at one or two. So I don't want to sit here and say that you have to take Young over Stroud right now. I think these two quarterbacks are the top two guys, but going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And then at five, we have Jameer Gibbs going off the board. Completely fine with the Jameer Gibbs selection once you have those top two quarterbacks going. We actually just ended up taking him, I believe, in the fourth round of a dynasty startup draft. And if you're looking at Jameer Gibbs, everybody's been talking about, oh, he's Alvin Kamara, he's Alvin Kamara. If you ever watched an Alabama game this year, that's the only thing they would say. That's the only thing anybody in fantasy football is saying right now. Everybody thinks he's Alvin Kamara. What I will say is he's a phenomenal passing down running back. Right now, he's projected to be a first-round NFL draft pick, so you know he's going to get a ton of opportunity in year one. So yeah, Jameer Gibbs, phenomenal player. We just took him in the fourth round of that startup. At six, this is where it gets very interesting. You have Jordan Addison going off the board, where right now, if we're looking at NFL mock draft database, Jordan Addison's actually ranked ahead of Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's supposed to be a mid-round one selection. Obviously, this is a player that is true sophomore season in immense amount of production literally insane wins the bullet I mean phenomenal but it was also in an offense that had very good quarterback play with Kenny Pickett it was in an offense that just had a ridiculous amount of production to go around overall so his market share numbers weren't obnoxious by any means now of course we've seen players that put up 
just ridiculous seasons in phenomenal offenses. And their market share numbers are still really exciting. Go look at Devonta Smith at Alabama when he literally breaks every record imaginable. Just one example here. But anyway, with Addison, he goes to USC his junior season, disappoints. I mean, obviously, it's a phenomenal offense. You have Lincoln Riley. You have the number one quarterback in 2024, yada, yada, yada. But I am a little hesitant to just go in line and say he should be someone over Jackson Smith and Jigba when, in my opinion, from a market share perspective, he has never had a season as good as what Njigba had back in 2020. And to go along with this, he's never played with the same level of competition. So that's why I'm going to have him right below. Obviously, Quentin Johnston coming off right afterwards. Now, between these two wide receivers, I am probably going to prefer Jordan Addison because we've seen him do it in two different offenses. We've seen him do it with a multitude of quarterbacks. But... They are neck and neck for us at this point. Right now, if you're looking at NFL Mock Draft Database, I mean, they're projecting that Johnson's actually the first wide receiver off the board in the NFL Draft. And we've seen NFL, they value these big-bodied wide receivers. I mean, y'all know that I have some self-conscious thing. I have some psychological issue where these big-bodied wide receivers, I never like. I always say that they're the most overrated players. And to be fair, we were screaming that Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, as well as Mike Williams were all massively overvalued this past year, and they ended up being so. I just really think it's people see on the field just some big, tall, alpha-looking man go, oh, crap, he's probably going to be good in fantasy. Whereas now today's NFL more so values the ability to make plays after the catch, the ability to generate separation. I don't know. I still think he's wide receiver three. Probably a fair range for him to go in. But I will say our next guy, Anthony Richardson at eight, I think you could take as early as six. Now, we ended up taking Anthony Richardson in that 2023 startup draft, the same draft that we ended up taking Jameer Gibbs. My thought process here is Anthony Richardson looks like he's going to be a first-round NFL draft pick. Great. He's most likely going to get to start at the NFL level, and he has rushing upside. Now, we said this when we took him in the mock draft, and I don't mean to say he's Jalen Hurts. But Jalen Hurts was one of, if not our most drafted rookies back in 2020. And the sole reason for it was rushing upside was being devalued and we went all for it. Especially with those rookie quarterbacks. I feel like that's where we should be targeting the rushing guys. Whereas maybe when they're starting to get to their second contract, like a Lamar Jackson, then we pivot more towards the pocket passing options, such as a Justin Herbert. But Anthony Richardson this past year had 650 rushing yards. So like I said, he's not Lamar Jackson. He's not Jalen Hurts, but the man can run the ball. And I'm completely fine making that bet on a rushing quarterback that's guaranteed to have a starting job at some point. Now, our next guy is going to end up being Will Levis, who right now is actually supposed to go at the beginning of the first round. I mean, we have obviously some people speculating that the Colts are going to move up to one to take Will Levis. I don't know if that has any truth to it. I have no idea. With Will Levis, this is another quarterback that people got mad at us for overranking him when we ranked him as a mid-round one rookie in this draft class because I'm looking at someone that has some rushing upside. Now, he's not going to be the world's best rusher, but back in Kentucky in 2021, he had about 400 rushing yards. So, hell, he's probably going to be able to get to 20, 30 rushing yards on a per-game basis at the NFL level. So, that's does make a difference in terms of the final fantasy output at the end of the season. He should also be another one of these names that gets a guaranteed crack at a starting job. So I'm actually fine taking Will Levis here. Our next pick, Sean Tucker. I understand that a lot of people are very excited about him. And with a lot of these running backs, it's very difficult for me to make any concrete statements until we get official NFL combine numbers. And at that point, we will also have significantly better projections on where these guys are going to go in the NFL draft. What is phenomenal with Sean Tucker is his receiving down skill set. He's going to be a pass catcher at the next level, which you can be very excited about. I do want to see the official size. What I am also worried about is the fact that according to NFL Mock Draft Database, it's going to be a borderline day three pick. And for us to be taking... Guys that could be going day three of the NFL draft over some of these other names is a little aggressive. So at this point, outside of the top tier running backs, 
outside of Bijan Robinson as well as Jameer Gibbs. I'm probably going to be devaluing these tier two guys just because I think there's a lot of uncertainty and not too many reasons to take the swing and possibly miss. Now, Zach Charbonnet coming out with our next selection. I mean, a running back that people were excited about, and I was excited about coming out of UCLA last season. It's another player that should actually be in a good spot to be a passing down running back at the next level. I mean, we're pulling this up 37 receptions this past year. In my opinion, that's the number one thing that he proved on from his junior to senior season. And maybe that's going to end up actually increasing his draft price because hell right now, according to NFL mock draft database, he's supposed to be a second round selection. Whereas if you're getting a second round running back that can catch the ball, and you're getting him here at the end of round one. I would love that profile. Of course, we need to see his official numbers. Zach Evans going to be our next guy. Funny that Zach Evans leaves. TCU goes, you know what? Yeah, I want to have better competition. And then TCU makes it to the title. Blah, blah, blah. With Zach Evans, a running back that people are over the moon about. Right now projected to be a day two NFL draft pick. Should be a great athlete. Of course, this time last year, we thought that Zach Evans was actually going to be ranked significantly higher than this. But, I mean... I don't think his transfer ended up to be as successful as a lot of people assumed it would be. Now, Michael Mayer coming out with our next one. I ended up taking him here, and this goes back to what we were discussing with a lot of uncertainty at this point before the NFL Combine. I am most likely going to be moving some running backs ahead of him in our rankings once we have those official numbers and once we have better projections with NFL draft capital. I feel like it's a very safe selection, not a selection that has a ton of upside at this point to be taking a tight end that is almost guaranteed to be selected in the first round of the NFL draft. He does have a great prospect profile. Now, of course, the issue is he's a rookie tight end, which you don't really want to invest into. So by the time we get to April, May, I'm probably going to be taking a running back here. But while there's a lot of uncertainty with those guys at this point, I'll take the guaranteed first round draft pick. And then Josh Downs, our next guy. It's very interesting is just like Jordan Addison, Josh Downs is a, another player that actually saw his market share numbers decrease from year two to year three. I mean, after his year two season, where the man literally had over 1,300 receiving yards, the man had over 100 receptions at UNC. I was all over. I thought that he was going to be my guy, and he still is very appealing. We've seen wide receivers in the past have that step down from year two to year three, and honestly, ends up being fine at the next level. Should be an early second round NFL draft pick. Maybe he falls to the mid-second, but it's kind of the profile of a player that I like at the wide receiver position. Obviously, we don't want to be, to be too, too small here, but someone that's going to win more so with his routes, that's going to be able to draw a ton of volume, and isn't overhyped because he's some alpha wide receiver one, six, four. But now our next guy, Keishon Boutte. I mean, second round pick. Speaking of guys that were hyped up way more than this last year, the year before. I mean, this has been a Devin Darling for a very long time. Should be an elite athlete at the NFL Combine. I mean, at LSU. Did disappoint this past season. I mean, in 2021, in six games, the man had about 500 receiving yards. In 2022, in 11 games, the man had about 500 receiving yards. His freshman season was his best season. So, I mean, if you're looking at how excited people were two years ago for this man compared to now, obviously, completely different scenario. Now, next guy, Zay Flowers. I mean, coming from a small school, should still be a second, third round NFL draft pick. With Zay Flowers, there are a few red flags, I think. You're going to be looking at A, the fact that he's a small school player. B, the fact that he's coming out after four years, which you really don't like to see the elite breakout his fourth season. And then all of a sudden, this is someone that's on everybody's radar because he dominated 18-year-olds when he was 22. What's nice about Flowers is this is a player that actually had his best season or one of his best seasons as a sophomore. So because he broke out and was dominant as a sophomore, I'm going to be a little bit more in on him than what we've seen with players over the past few years. I mean, you have a bunch of small school names that I did not like at the wide receiver position last season. Just a random example. Khalil Shakir is the perfect, perfect example of a player that just dominates because he's so much older than everybody else at a small school. But now our next guy, Tank Bigsby. Uh, people were very excited about Bigsby last year. We'll say he still has the best name ever. But if we are going to be looking at what you had this past season, what's good 
is that he was able to expand his role as a pass catcher. Very similar to almost every other running back. And this is why I think that the running back class isn't as bad as a lot of people are making it out to seem because a lot of these second tier running backs did demonstrate the ability to catch the football. So as long as their testing numbers are fine and as long as they get the draft capital, I'm still kind of in on them. Obviously, Fell, what's going to be very worrisome is this could be a player that goes on day three of the NFL draft. Now, our next guy, Jalen Hyatt. Uh, this should be a wide receiver that goes the end of the first the beginning of the second round of the NFL draft. Now, of course, that doesn't mean he should be valued extremely high from a dynasty perspective because this is a player that looks to most likely impact an NFL offense more positively than your dynasty team. He should be a great athlete. He should be a field stretching player. Like if you're looking at his yards per reception this past season off of only 67 receptions, he had over 1,200 receiving yards for almost 20 yards per reception. Like, that's going to command defensive coordinator attention. That's going to command safety attention at the next level. But at the same time, if he's not going to be drawing a ridiculous amount of targets, which he didn't this past season at Tennessee, I know he had competition. He only drew about five targets a game. From a fantasy football standpoint, I'll be a little concerned. Now, our next guy coming out of Texas A&M, if you liked Isaiah Spiller, you better like this new guy because if we go to Isaiah Spiller and Devin's 2021 season, you're looking at a running back that averaged 8.5 yards per carry compared to Isaiah Spiller at 5.3. Now, of course, that is with a limited sample, but you actually saw something very similar back in the other season where he averaged 7 yards per carry compared to Isaiah Spiller at 5.6. This time, uh, an offseason ago, people were thinking that Isaiah Spiller and Brees Hall were neck and neck. Remember, it wasn't until the NFL Combine that everybody realized, okay, yeah, crap. Um, Spiller's way slower than we thought he was and way smaller, and Brees Hall's way faster. So, I mean, obviously, everybody pivoted over to Brees Hall right at the right time. But still, this is going to be a running back that was hyper, hyper efficient in college. And right now, actually projects to be a day two NFL draft pick. Now, our next guy is going to be Dwayne McBride, Alabama at Birmingham, and going to be a day three NFL traffic. So I don't necessarily know how excited we can be about this. I think this will be one of the players that the combine matters the most for. Now, our next guy, Kendra Miller, another day three guy. I mean, at this point, all these running backs that project to be day three picks, I am kind of just saying, you know what? Um, can we not pivot over to a wide receiver that we are confident is going to have a shot? Like, can we at least see the combine numbers? Can we at least have better projections? Like, if we're going to be looking at Rasheed Rice, this should be a player that's a day two pick. He has a chance of being selected in the second round of the NFL draft. He goes here at 22, kind of like betting on the wide receiver that, in my mind, has a better shot at being relevant or at least a higher floor. And then Hendon Hooker, our next guy, 23. This is very, very similar to what we had with Jalen Hurts. And the probability he turns into Jalen Hurts, incredibly low. He's most likely not Jalen Hurts. He's most likely going to be nothing important at all. Now, yes, he's extremely old, but the thought process is most of these players that you're taking at the end of the second round, the beginning of the third round, of your 12-team Superflex drafts, they are all going to be bad. They are all going to be bust. Even if they get a starting job at the NFL level, which for a lot of these running backs, for a lot of these wide receivers, is not a guarantee. You don't know if you can start them in fantasy. But the reason that in 2020, I took Jalen Hurts in almost every single draft imaginable is not because of some genius that knew Jalen Hurts was going to be phenomenal. Of course, I had no idea. But we said... If this player can start at the NFL level, if he earns a starting job, he'll be putting up approximately one zillion fantasy points with his rushing upside. Hendon Hooker most likely won't be anything. But if he does start at the NFL level, he most likely will put up a lot of points given that rushing upside. So I'm actually fine with the pick here, 23. Now, Deuce Vaughn going here, actually supposed to be a day two draft pick. I mean, another one of these running backs. I'm, I'm sorry to say this. I want to see the combine. Rashawn Johnson we're taking at the 301 because hook them horns. We already took Bijan Robinson. Let's get some team chemistry in here. Let's build out this locker room. 
But all jokes aside, thank you so much for checking out this video. This ran a little long, so we'll dive deeper in to third, fourth round of rookies as the offseason goes forward. That's all I think I have for you. Of course, thank you so much for being a member of the flock. I truly do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day, and I really hope I get to see you with the video tomorrow.